A Spark gives us a lot of options for grouping and sorting on pair RDDs. And again, we're not going to work through all of those. It's always worth it to read the documentation for a comprehensive overview of every single API call. But we are going to look at a few common things we might want to do with our movie data, useful things that are going to rely on grouping and sorting transformations. And in this section, we have three challenges we're going to pursue. Let's take a look at those. We're going to want to output movies featuring Johnny Depp grouped by genre. We want to output movies featuring Johnny Depp and movies with Tom Hanks co-grouped by year. That's going to take some explanation, but we'll get there. And we're going to look for movies from 2010 featuring Johnny Depp ordered by rating. The group by key transformation is pretty intuitive. Uh, some of the transformations in the last section were a little hairy. This one is pretty easy to understand. What we're going to do is we're going to take the input RDD and get all of the unique key values. And you see there are two of them, K1 and K2 in the source RDD. And the output RDD is going to have an iterable or a, a collection of the values that we find with that key. So in the source RDD for key K1, we have V1, V3, and V4. And if you actually look at the RDD on the left, you'll see those. For K2, we have V2 and V5. Simple as that. So it groups things up by key and gives us a collection of the values in the output RDD. Group by key gives us a fairly straightforward way of collecting up all of the Johnny Depp movies by genre. Now we're going to have to use a flat map in here to make this work. So let's walk through the code to get us to the point where we can do this nice, convenient group by key transformation. The first three lines, we're querying movies by actor, getting title, release year, and genres. And we're asking Cassandra Table to give us a tuple of those three things. That's a string, an int, and a set of strings. Genre is a set in the Cassandra schema, and we're asking it for it to be a, a set of strings in the tuple we get back as well. Next, we flat map it. Okay, we flat map it, and we say every time flat map sees uh, three things called T, Y, and G, S, or really just three arguments, uh, we're going to call them. T, Y, and G, S, that's title, year, and genres, then we'll map those genres. That's just mapping the Scala set. Uh, that's not a Spark mapping going on there. But we have that set, and we're going to map it to return a tuple containing the genre and the title, comma, the year. All right, then we'll take that and group it by key, collect it, and print it out. And as you can see in the results down below, sample for just a single genre. The data would get a little out of hand if we tried to show it all. But just a single genre there, uh, we see for the family genre, we had Alice Through the Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Finding Neverland. Uh, those four films all with the family genre. At the time of this recording, Through the Looking Glass is not even released yet. So this is a little glimpse into the future. Co-group, or its synonym group with, is a transformation you use on two RDDs if you want to group them by key and collect together the keys you find in one RDD with the keys you find in the other RDD. Let's take a look at some pictures of this and some code and see if we can make this make sense. Now we have those two RDDs as input, as you see on the bottom. And when we co-group them, we will, for example, take all of the unique values of K1 from the first RDD, that top one, that's V1 and V3, and we're going to put them together in an iterable. Then we're going to take all of the unique values of K2 from the second RDD and put them together in an iterable. And you see for that first record, the first row in the resulting pair RDD where the key is K1, we get a collection of V1 and V3 and then a collection of W1. Likewise for K2, we get V2 and W2 and W3. Now we've drawn lines for you on the slide here, and I encourage you to pause the video, follow those lines, and make sure you understand the mapping that's happening here. We're taking two pair RDDs and grouping their values together and merging them together in one bigger record. Now, what would we use that for? Uh, suppose we wanted to see all of the movies that had Johnny Depp in them and all of the movies that had Tom Hanks in them grouped by year. So I need to know what was Hanks doing in 2011 and what was Depp doing in 2011. I want to see that in one row. Let's look at the code. First, we make an RDD that we'll call Johnny Movies, and that's all of the movies by actor that have Johnny Depp in them. And on that third line, we're going to key by, we've covered that previously, but that's going to turn that 
Cassandra row into a pair RDD according to the anonymous function we pass in. We're going to pick out the release year and make that the key. So this is now a pair RDD where the key is the release year and the value is the row that's returned from the query. So we're turning that row into a pair RDD in a fairly intuitive way. Tom movies, exactly the same thing, except we're looking for where the actor is Tom Hanks. And again, key by on release here. So now we have two RDDs, Johnny movies and Tom movies, so we can co-group them, which we do simply by calling Johnny movies, co-group, Tom movies, collect for each, and away we go. We're showing you limited output there, since that would be potentially a large data set. It would be a pain to look at on the slide. But for 2010, we see we have two Cassandra rows for Johnny Depp, followed by one Cassandra row for Tom Hanks. And if you're wondering why a Cassandra row, look back up at the top line when we called Cassandra table. We did no type coercion into a tuple. We're just letting that give us Cassandra rows back the way it normally does. If I wanted that to be, say, a list of all the movie titles that had either one, I could then flat map that and convert those two collections into a single collection on the output. That's something we've looked at how to do earlier. Now, we've done all this rating stuff. Suppose we wanted to output a list of movies sorted by rating. Uh, that might seem to be a good feature on Killer Video, or even a list of any videos sorted by rating. Here are the top rated videos. Well, we'd still want to use pair RDDs, but we'd want an ordered pair RDD. Sort by key is a transformation that makes one of those for us. Sort by key doesn't need to take any arguments. We can simply call it on an RDD, and that's going to do its thing. Uh, we can also pass in that optional ascending parameter. It's true by default, so by default, things are going to be ordered in ascending order. But if we pass in a false there, then they'll be descending. Now, the key type has to implement the ordered trait in Scala terms. In other words, it has to be a thing that the language knows how to compare in order to do the ordering. That's fairly intuitive. Now, putting this into practice, let's look at how we would do this with our movies data. We query movies by actor, where actor is Johnny Depp and release year is 2010 or greater. We're only interested in the most recent few years there. We want title, release year, and rating, and we're going to convert that into a tuple with that as line where the first element of the tuple is the rating or zero if the film is unrated. The second element of the tuple is, again, a tuple of title and year. That gives us a pair RDD that we're able to sort by key. Of course, we would like the best movie first, so we'll sort in descending order. We'll pass in a false there, and then we'll collect and iterate and print them out, and we see the results we get there. Looks like a 7.3, a 6.7, a 6.5, and a 6.3, not too shabby. Now, a few warnings uh, for grouping and sorting. Both of them are potentially expensive. They can require shuffling, and they don't ever reduce the size of the data set. So if you've got a large data set and you're going to group or sort them, uh, be advised. Grouping also, you might be thinking that there would be a way to use this for aggregating or joining. We have aggregation and join transformations for those purposes, and they're more efficient for those purposes. So don't hack grouping to do a join. Also, when you do a grouping, that can potentially create big values, right? The, the keys are going to be the same, but you're, you're grouping. You're taking a bunch of values here that were individual RDD records and making them into one RDD record on the output side. That can be a problem if those get large. Now, RDDs, remember, are distributed. So the individual records of an RDD can be spread around as many servers as you want. But if you do some really pathological kind of grouping that makes a big value, that big value does have to fit in memory. The value itself, a single element in an RDD, can't itself be partitioned. So don't get too crazy with that. You want to look for groupings that might result in that sort of pathological sizing and try to avoid those.